What is happening, everybody? Welcome to the Games and Graphs podcast. My name is Sonny G, and I'm here as always with Finn Steele. Hello. Finn, it has been a long time. Just a bit. Yeah, it's been, been a while. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> a little bit. Just a touch. Uh, how you doing? Yeah, I'm doing good, thank you. I'm feeling pretty, pretty good. Feeling pretty uh, oozy. Feeling good. You're feeling pretty oozy? Pretty, pretty oozy right now, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oozy is the way to feel, 100%. Absolutely. How about yourself? Yeah, I'm good. I'm good, man. Best of best I've ever felt, I think, to yeah. be fair. In terms of health and fitness, I've just got over a ridiculously shit uh, throat cold, which has taken me just the longest to get over. And oh, that's yeah. why I've not been doing anything for ages. So, uh, otherwise... Yeah, all good. Just happy Excellent. to be back doing this. We've been talking about it for a while now, but yeah, it's just good to be back doing it. Yes, absolutely. I missed it. You've been killing it streaming, though. Yeah, yeah, I'm doing well. I'm fun. <laughs> Playing old games. Although you, you you are streaming in the wee hours of the morning when normal <laughs> humans are in bed, at least <laughs> on this side of the Atlantic. Yeah, but yeah, that's a good point. I need to. I should really start doing it earlier, but. At least starting like regular times, like in the evenings, but then I'll just, I'll just go on for a yeah. long time. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> so, are you streaming to like a bunch of Americans or? Um, yeah, a bunch of Americans, some Europeans, some. <laughs> a bit of a bit, of, a bit of everything. A bit of everything. Yeah, I need to, I do need to start earlier because the views do tend to drop off toward the end. So, I'll be the All Atlantic champion. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the All Atlantic. Yeah. <laughs> and um, are you still living the high life? A high life, uh, you know, not, not, not working. working. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah, yeah. Still uh, doing my own thing. I'm enjoying it. That's good. Yeah. Is it working out good for you though? It is. It is much needed uh, time off from retail. The retail yeah, hell. Have you got any? Have you got any plans to hop back in in the future? Not to retail. Um, yeah, yeah. Of course. I'll eventually. I'll uh, unless of course YouTube and Twitch take off, which is unlikely. But <laughs> eventually, I'll. Uh, find something that isn't working in retail or with the public in general enough. if possible <laughs> yeah people are the worst yeah yeah for sure i mean you know we've established this over the years that we think people are the absolute worst <laughs> not the people that listen to this no of course those people they're, are okay they're good obviously people. yeah the best people. they're the best people Absolutely. yeah the best people <laughs> <laughs> but yeah generally people suck yeah that's okay. Yeah. Oh, man. We're free. I'm free of that now. Yeah, it's fine. You are free of that. You're a free man. I'm a free man. <laughs> free man. I can't believe it's taken us so long to get back to this. I've forgotten how to do it properly. Yeah. I know I've been doing my own podcast, but that's just by myself. So I just sort of like go ranting off, and I'm, or, you know, the next thing I know, I've recorded 50 minutes worth of talking, and then I'm just like, okay, let's go. I'm just put it out. And listen <laughs> yeah. to it. Just that's put fair. it back. No, it's good though. To be fair, could be saying anything. <laughs> any old gibberish yeah the last time I actually made notes I haven't made any notes for today because that's not how we roll on the Games and Grass podcast that's fair I've got a few things down we don't like, do notes yeah that's true oh wait you've written stuff down I need like very basic stuff like you're a changed man I am I used to when I first started <laughs> I used to do all kinds of notes and that was like I can't be asked anymore that <laughs> feels like a fucking age ago now though it, it does many years ago a lot has changed so much has changed. Yeah, big time. Holy shit. You grew a beard? <laughs> yeah, I grew a beard. <laughs> Got a new place to sort of stay. Uh, yeah. My brain melted. That was fun. Yeah. <laughs> and came back years. again? And came back. Put it back together again. Sort of. <laughs> For the most part. Yeah. <laughs> but the most important thing is we're still here and still... Fighting the good fight by recording the Games and Grass podcast. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Right. Let's just get let's get into it. We've got I'm pretty sure we've got a lot to cover today. So a few, um, a few we'll just we'll just get straight into it. Finn, what have you been playing? I've been playing a, a lot since you last recorded, funnily enough. Uh recently mm. I've been playing um God of War. Which has been very good. Okay. Um, no, no, hang on. <laughs> no, no, you, you can't I was, I was say gonna... to me it's been very good. <laughs> I was going to go Based back to on it. the tweet that you put out, <laughs> like a series of tweets that you put out, explain yourself. 
Um, it's just, it's very slow. The story is great. Do you think it's slow? I can't believe you think it's slow. <laughs> the story is great. I do want to, I'm going to finish it for the story. Graphically, it looks incredible, obviously. Yeah. It is a great game. But I just find it, I just find it being really slow. I just like, you move to one area, you fight a bunch of dudes, you solve a puzzle. But you, well, you, you try and solve a puzzle, but then some dickhead tells you what to do before you have a chance to solve it. Um, which I hate in games. It's like just uh, you, the puzzle's there for a reason. Let me figure it out. You don't need to tell me. Ugh. Maybe the game's um, telling you that you're too stupid <laughs> and you've taken too long. No, it's like literally as soon as I get there, it's like whoever's like, oh, you need to stand on that foot. Try doing your axe on that and stand on that platform and then do this and that. It's like, give me a second. Let me have a look. It's so annoying. But at least some game. I think Last of Us did it. But at least they gave you like a prompt to say if you need help, press the button, which is fine. Mm -hmm. But with this is just like, hey, do this. I don't know. What we're trying to explore is like, hey, shouldn't we be going this way? It's like, no, I'm looking around. Leave me alone. You little shit. There are parts <laughs> in the story though that like sort of do explain that though, don't they? Like when you meet certain characters. Yeah. And they're they're like, well, if you go walking off, Atreus will be like, Oh, that's just what he does. And then yeah, yeah, you'll do good. it again and you'll get the same sort of line of questioning, but It'll be like, oh, I remember. He just goes walking up. Yeah, that 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 is pretty good. I do I do like that. I do like the chat between the different uh, characters, but sometimes it does go on mm -hmm. a little bit. But Finn, uh, <laughs> it does. It Finn, can... this is this is, <laughs> <laughs> this is a, it's a it's a narrative. It's a story game. <laughs> it's filling in the gaps. I mean, what do you do? You just want silence? No, it's a, I do like it. No. It's just. It's just it's a bit much. I just want to... So many butts. So <laughs> many butts here. Like, I, I want... like it, but I, I think want... it's really good, but <laughs> but I just want, I there's just too to... much talking, too much walking, too much fighting, too many gods, too much war. It's not That's what. Why... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Uh, but no, I feel I want I want to fight more. I just want more. I want to kill things. I'm Kratos. I'm the god of war. Let me kill things. Mm -hmm. Stop talking at me. <laughs> uh, I do like the bit. You where... need to go back to the ps3 that's what you need to do you need to fire up god of war 3 which is a phenomenal game by the way right. and you know god of war ascension and just mash the y button to have sex <laughs> like the old kratos would have done yeah <laughs> now i don't know i just i i think it's just i played a lot of similar games fairly recently i think i might just be a bit burnt out on it okay um but no, I do like it. I do like the when it opens up a bit and you can go do your own thing. Like mm -hmm. when, when you're on the boat and stuff. That's cool. I like the bit when you go back, when you're playing as um, Arceus. And you meet that girl. And Atreus. You, Atreus, that's the one. And you meet that girl and you're doing this whole thing. That's pretty cool. Spoilers. Spoilers. I didn't say what it was. <laughs> but um, <laughs> yeah, it's uh, I do like it. Mostly. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, all right. What else have you been playing? Um, what else indeed? I just finished playing a game on Game Pass, um, a Castlevania kind of game, called Record of Lod Lodos War. Uh, it sounds like such a you game. <laughs> it's, very, it's a very old school um, style Castlevania uh, kind of game. It's very good. It's very okay. short. Uh, it comes off Game Pass, I think, tomorrow. So I wanted to play it quick before uh, it goes away. But no, okay. I really enjoyed it. Really, really good. Um, and yeah, just fun. It's a fun Castlevania homage. The old the old okay. days. The good old days. That was really fun. Good. Um, what else? Uh, I've been a little bit of VR stuff. I'm going to try and get through, get through some VR games before the new one comes out next February. I think it's February. Have you pre-ordered? Yes, it's got it on pre-order. Cool. So it's a lot of money. Oof. Worth yeah, how are you feeling about that price point? It's, it's a bit much, but... It is like the best of the best VR. It seems like, um, unless you spend like thousands of pounds on it, which is insane. But it looks at these, the um, specs are incredible. It's like, yeah. oh yeah. I, I mean, I saw a lot of debate about it when when like it was first announced and the price was announced or whatever, mm. and um, people were like, "This is ridiculous money. It's more expensive than the actual PS5." Yeah. It's like, yeah, but the. It's virtual reality. Yeah, they're, they're the two words. 
it's not like you know vr racing from the mega drive <laughs> uh, you know that that's it's not that yeah it's not the virtual boy it's yeah no, it's <laughs> definitely not that it, you know it's I've, i'm a i'm a big fan of vr anyway um you know i play on the on the quest and, and stuff like that but um yeah i i i love vr and i yes it is expensive but i think it will be uh, absolutely worth it yeah absolutely on the VR. Um, so yeah, I played a Vacation Simulator. I've got the Platinum in that, which is a sequel to Job oh, Simulator. Nice. It's very fun. Was it equally as funny as the as Job Simulator? It's very funny, yeah. I like it a lot. Oh, okay. The, yeah, so that was really fun. Uh, played Stray, which is adorable. I love that. Yeah. Very cute game about a cat. A kitty cat. It's very a great cool. game. Really good game. It's so good. And I could go on forever, but last one I'll talk about is Sonic Frontiers, of course. Oh, here we go, actually. This, I've been <laughs> waiting for this. This is so good. I've been waiting for this. Now, it's done well. It's sold well. Mm. Uh, it reviewed pretty well. Reviewed better than most recent Sonic 3D outings. Yep. What do you think about it? It's It's incredible. I love it. It's you get so much freedom. You feel it's so much speed in the open world. It feels like you're playing in Sonic, you know. Mm -hmm. um, graphically, you can tell it was made as a Switch game and then ported, like, upscaled <laughs> to everything else. It's not the right. best. It, is, it does look really good. It doesn't look incredible as some uh, more recent newer games. But it does the job. And it's just it's just fun. It's all there really is to it. You get so much to explore and do whatever you want in any order you want basically it's just yeah it's just really good <laughs> it's hard to explain that it's, it's the best Sonic game in years um, which isn't yeah. difficult let's be honest <laughs> it's, it's true they've definitely gone in a, in a new direction with it which is okay um, I think it's a direction going forwards I still want to expand on uh, I've announced some DLC and things coming during the, the next year which is awesome mm -hmm. and yeah and also the music it's bloody incredible. The, dude, the, the boss fights in playing Super Sonic, 10 out of 10. Best boss fights in any game this year. It's so good. The music as well, the like, heavy metal music you wouldn't expect in the Sonic game. They're literally like... Any game this year? Yeah. Best music any game this year. Best no, boss fights any boss game fights. this year. Yeah. Really? Absolutely. It feels... Okay. It feels, every boss fight feels so, like, just, just epic. you got the heavy metal, heavy, heavy metal music in the background. You find these massive enemies at Super Sonic. It's so cool. It's, it feels like okay. a it feels like Metal Gear Rising boss fights. <laughs> I mean, you know what I mean? Yeah, I do know what you mean. Yeah, <laughs> um, I'm just I'm glad you're enjoying it because you know we've been I've been hypercritical of Sonic games, 3D Sonic games over the last however long. But, Understandable. Because for the most part they've been awful. Yeah. Uh, but this one, I've only played a very small amount of it um, so far, but I, I do think it's really good. I just, there was just something about the open world that just felt super special and different. Yeah. And But still very Sonic at the same time, because you've still got the rails, you've still got the loops and, you know, um, not the things that make you go faster. I don't know what you, you know, like the speedy treadmill shooter offy thingies <laughs> yeah the turbo boost thing definitely not their official name <laughs> the boost pads but it, it all just yeah yeah yeah, it, yeah that's it it all just feels like it like it's meant to be like it should be part of like sonic going forward like that's exactly how they should do sonic games i mean and you you know they're only going to get more and more impressive as long as they keep this formula and build on it this is this is Sonic for the next, God knows how long, ten years. Yeah, no, it's really good. I was looking at the Steam reviews um, earlier. It's like it's the highest it can be. It's like they call it overwhelmingly positive because it has most majority of reviews are like positive, and everyone, people just love yeah. it. It's like Sonic fans just, just love it. We've been waiting for this for so long. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And they finally figured that out after all these years. Congratulations, Sega. <laughs> yeah, you did it. Well done. 
It's not long <laughs> enough, but you got there. You did it, dude. You did it. Yeah. Uh, it is a bit janky in places. Um, you know, open more games. Oh, to be. There it is. Oh, it's Sonic. That's you know. Sonic. It's, it's going to be some janky. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah. But otherwise, but no, it, it it doesn't distract from the fact that it's a really good game. Yeah. In my opinion. No, I, I do 100% completely agree with you. And a lot of other people agree with you as well. It, mm. it is a very good game and just such a positive direction for Sonic. After all these years, finally. Finally. We get a Sonic game worth playing for more than 10 minutes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I planned them. So I'm, I'm, I'm just glad you're happy with it. Yeah, it's good. I actually planned them Sonic Forces. I don't know why. I don't remember why. Other, other than it's Sonic. I finished it. <laughs> yeah. I don't know why. <laughs> but I finished it. Uh, I don't, you know what? I don't think it was terrible, Sonic yeah. Forces. I don't think it's as bad. People, people talk about like it's the worst possible thing ever. It's it's fine. It's not no, good. It's, it's, what's, <laughs> it's, what's the one where he turns to the werewolf? What's that one? That's Sonic Unleashed. Awful. Yeah. The speed levels in that are okay, but the werewolf levels just kind of ruin the whole thing for me. Yeah, really crap. Um, what else is crap? Um, Sonic and the Dark Knight on the Wii. Sonic and the what? Sorry. Sonic and the Dark Knight, I think it's called. Yeah, it's like oh, Batman. <laughs> no, I think there was one called Sonic and the Secret Rings, which is okay, not great, but okay. And then they released okay. a sequel to that, which was Sonic and the Dark Knight, which was just bad. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Sonic Colors isn't great. I like Sonic Colors. Okay. I don't, I don't use AIDS very well, but I like it. I, I, I have positive memories of it. Well, my first experience of it was only very recently with the... Oh, oh shit. You're falling. Camera's going wonky. <laughs> stuff all over the place. Things are going nuts. It's all good. It's all good. <laughs> there we go. Oh, and Discord's going uh, off as well. Bloody Discord. Of course. Of course. You know what? This is my fault because I told them that we were going to be recording tonight. Oh, and Steve. it just opens everything. It's what? Sorry, I think it's Steve posting links about Adam. It's Steve. Time. Yeah, speak, speak it off. Uh, at the time, football podcast available now. Yeah, me just trying to sort my life out here with my camera just and tripod just going fucking skits. There's my hand. Good. <laughs> Talk to the hand. Yay! This is insane. What the fuck is going on? <laughs> Why can we never like go off without a hitch on this podcast? <laughs> I know, right? Technical difficulties. I was going so well. <laughs> there we go. I think we're good. Are we good? We're good. Mm. Slightly off centre. Uh, but... uh... Leaning Tower of Sunny. <laughs> this is fucking insane. It's like nothing is working for me. Discord's going skits. I need to mute it. Uh, there we go. Mute it. Now my, my tripod doesn't want to work properly. Look, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> It's just, just, just my hoodie. Yeah, just the bottom half of your face and the hoodie and the mic. Just, just the bottom half of my face. <laughs> Let me try and get this properly right, for fuck's sake, you know. God damn it! First podcast back, and we just wait. Here we go. Oh. We got it, dude. We're back. Different angle, but we're back. <laughs> Perfect. Ish. Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> um. What were we talking about? Uh, Sonic. How good Sonic is. Um, yeah, it's good. Yeah, and that's about it, I think. I'm playing a bunch of old games on stream, of course. Yeah. I've been playing uh, Dirt of Cerberus, which is the sequel to Final Fantasy VII. It gets a bad rap, mm-hmm. but I, I really enjoyed it. I ended up enjoying it quite a lot. I think it's one of those games that people, it's like cool to hate. Everyone hates on it because it's a cool thing to do, but I really enjoyed mm-hmm. it. I didn't get it. Yeah, but you do get a corner of people like that on the internet, don't you, where it is cool to hate things. Yeah. It's like someone... I've never really understood it. I don't get why people are like that. Yeah, I don't know. Because they want to fit in, I suppose. Says, oh, this cool YouTuber said this game sucks, so I have to also say it sucks, even though I've never played it. Just to just yeah. so people think I'm cool. Like, shut up. <laughs> Play the game yeah. yourself. You're not cool. No. Yeah, you're not cool for thinking that whatever it is sucks. <laughs> I just know. no. Just no. Just no. Yeah. Anyway, we got the soundboard back. We have. We do indeed. I have to check up on our old friend. How's it going, uh, bloke? Hey, up. Oh. Can you attend oh. the high score, bloke? Oh, still, still talking about oh. the high scores. 
Yeah, I thought we established this a while ago that we didn't want to attempt a high score blow. Yeah, we've we've been there. Um, we've done that. But thanks, though. It's good to so see many you times as well. Yeah. <laughs> what else we got in there? It's been a while. It has been a while. Uh, oops, I need to fall over again. No, no, no. I'm just trying to adjust it so that I don't look so low down, you know? <laughs> uh, you want air horn? <laughs> <That'd help>. <laughs> <laughs> um... What else you got? Uh, oh, this. Do we still have like the Hulk Hogan one, where he says, "I'm going to crank your knob" or whatever he says? <laughs> oh, it doesn't look working. Oh, well. um, yeah, let's have a look. I'm going to stretch his ass like it's never been stretched before. <laughs> <laughs> so, that's that one. <laughs> God damn, it's so good. Yeah. It's so big and thick, so it's really hard. <laughs> yep. <laughs> 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 I've also got one from uh, Al Pacino on the, from the Game Awards. Um, a good one. Here we go. I I I may come. I interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, Al. I wonder if he did. Yeah, I don't know. He did seem pretty excited to be there. Cheers, Al. <laughs> uh, so yeah, good stuff. Good times, yeah. <laughs> Um, I've been playing a bunch of different stuff. Yeah. And this, the, the fact that my camera thing is wonky is really irritating. Me. <laughs> I think that might be a bit better. I don't know. Who knows anymore? That's better, I guess. But yeah. I think it's, I think it's like keeps falling. Yeah. I don't, know. I don't care. <laughs> it's all good. You know what? I'll just, you know what I'll do? I'll just lower myself. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Good idea. There we go. Perfect. Imagine if the camera just like drooped with me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Classic games and grabs, technical issues. We had technical issues before we even started this. Oh yeah. Good old uh... This microphone is just for sure. I'm using AirPods. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what's for fuck's sake. What's up with this? Hey, we got it working. We got it working. That's the most important thing. And you've got a podcast for the first time in many months. Many, many months. Many many months. How about round of so yeah. Anyway, I've been pl- I've been playing a bunch of different stuff. Um, I've been, I too have been playing God of War. Nice. Um, I think it's very good. And that's it. <laughs> it's just very that's, good. That's that's my comments on God of War. I think it's I think it's excellent. I think it looks beautiful. Some of the details in the world um, are some of the best that, that I've ever seen. I think it looks incredible. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It really does, like the textures and everything. It's just, it really is uh, a phenomenal achievement. The voice acting is incredible. Yep. Uh, no, Christopher don't. Judge is g- unbelievable as Kratos. But I also think everybody in the cast is is absolutely fantastic, you know? Yeah. That... But it's just, a, it's just a great game and a great way to follow on from the the previous one. Yeah, I especially like... Um, I forgot the name. It's been a while since I played it. Uh, the Lady... Freya? Yeah, that's the one, yeah. But we like her, like she did a, a, a really good performance, I thought. Yeah. Yeah. But I, again, I I feel the same about everybody um, who's actually in the game. I, I think everybody's done a such a, a fantastic job. Uh, and it, it really is, it really is phenomenal. I mean, I know we're going to talk about our games of the year um, later on today. And I've not finished the game, so I've not put it in mine. No. But I know that if I had finished it, it would be right up there. Yeah, I, I put it in mine just because I I've, I've, haven't played that many games that came out this year. Um, playing a lot of old stuff. But uh, yeah, I, it's in there. Yeah, fair enough. So yeah, I, I am playing that. I'm playing I'm playing a bunch of stuff on Xbox at the minute. So I'm playing Need for Speed Unbound. Nice. Which is way better than it has any right to be. <laughs> That's good. It needed a good one. I like Need for Speed. For sure, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, this one, I mean, what I like about this is the fact that they built it for PS5 and Xbox Series consoles. That's good. So it's bypassed the previous gen PS4, Xbox One, which, in my opinion, is the right thing to do now for everything going forward. Yeah, I think it's time. It's time to move on. I, it's definitely time. I and mean, look at the new Horizon DLC that's coming out next year. It's just PS5. Yeah, it's good. So that's completely bypassing uh, PlayStation 4. But that's the right thing to do now. Because, you know, you've got this great technology. We're two years in. 
and we've barely scratched the surface with it. And I think, you know, some of the games that have come out um, that should have been, you know, choose my words carefully here because, you know, I don't want to sort of shit on a game that, you know, Horizon Forbidden West, for example, which I think is absolutely awesome, a great game. But I feel like had it bypassed the PS4, it would have been better. Yeah, I agree. Graphically and performance-wise. Yeah. Yeah, even like, like... these consoles can do 4K 60. That should be the standard. Yeah. Okay. Speaking of uh, sort of change subjects lately, what's uh, what's uh, uh, graphics mode have we gone with for God of War? Uh, quality. Yeah. Same. Here. It's got the uh, like the variable refresh rate, refresh rate, which I really mm-hmm. like a lot. So it's hovers around like 40 to 50 rather than 30. It seems to. <clears throat> yeah. So it's a really cool little um, feature. I, tr- I went for the performance to start with, but. Um... Uh, I don't know. I just I wasn't feeling it. I felt the same with Horizon as well. I actually played the whole of Forbidden West on quality mode, as opposed to performance mode. Mm. Um, I don't know. I like to see the graphics. You know. Yeah, me too. I've, I've been playing thirty with frames per second for fucking years. Uh, you know, it doesn't matter to me. Yeah, it makes no odds. Same. I did the same with Elden Ring as well. After a while, as um, sixty frames does look really good. In some games, it does improve it. Um, mm-hmm. But I think for the most part, for me. I'm happy with playing the lower frame rate. Um, but God of War does a good yeah. job of having like the best of both worlds in the sense with the uh, high frame rate mode. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I like that a lot. That's a good, yeah. that's a good feature I think should be in more games. Yeah, yes. definitely, definitely. But it, it, it is definitely time to leave behind PS4 and Xbox One now and just sort of focus on the PS5 and the Series S slash X that, you know, they're going to be around for years and years. It's time to start utilizing that technology better. Yeah. Absolutely, I agree. Uh, so, so Need for Speed's really good. Um, you know, it's Need for Speed. It's a racing game. I'm just really enjoying it. Yep. Um, speaking of frame rates, I'm playing the Callisto Protocol. Oh, uh, yeah. Which I'm very much enjoying. Cool. I saw some mixed things about it. I think it's mostly positive. I think it's something like the 70, 75 range on Metacritic. Yeah. But I think it's been mostly it is. positive. Yeah, for sure. Uh, and I, I really like it. Uh, I think it... But I, I like linear story games. The, yeah. There isn't enough of them at the minute. Everything's, you know, very open. You know, God of War is a lot more open than, you know, previous God of War tiles. It's, you know, there's loads of stuff to go off and explore and do and whatever. But this is a very much a straightforward, closed in narrative adventure. Yeah. Uh, but I like it. Again, the performances are very good. I'm actually playing this on performance mode because the quality mode where, you know, the graphics are great, but the the frame rate does dip. Yeah, that's a shame. So I'm playing on performance mode and it's great. Like, it's really, really good. Like, I, I have absolutely no qualms with it whatsoever. It's really, really good. I mean, if it's one that you're on the fence with and you're not sure about, then I would wait for a drop in price for sure. But it is yeah. uh, it is very, very good. Cool. I'll put it on my wish list. Yeah, because I'm waiting for the drop in price. <laughs> But it it made, yeah. it's made by the same guys who made Dead Space. I do love Dead Space mm-hmm. quite a lot, so I'm happy to uh, give it up there at some point. Oh, sure. I mean, it's only it's, it's like twelve hours long. Yeah, that's good. So it doesn't outstay its welcome. Uh, it's very much Dead Space, and you can tell when you're playing it. Yeah, yeah. But it, it is good. It is very. If you like Dead Space, you'll love it. It's it's very good, honestly. Cool. Hopefully so that's worth to... giving a look. Um, playing the new Pokemon on Switch. Nice. Okay, man. Uh, it performs like shit, and the graphics are fucking awful, <laughs> but... <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, that's what seems to be the common uh, thing people say. It looks terrible, but it, the frame rate's garbage, but it's really fun. Yeah, and it's weird, because usually you, you wouldn't tolerate it. Yeah. But for some reason, because it's Pokemon, we just do. But... <laughs> like, it's great that, you know, the open world settings there, it's very, you know, whereas Pokemon uh, Legends was, you know, set back in ye olde Pokemon times. Yeah. Whereas this one's set in like, you know, normal day Pokemon times or whatever. Uh, but yeah, it, it, I mean, it looks like shit. It's <laughs> absolutely like there's way better looking games out there on the Switch that came out a long, long time ago. Yeah, like Xenoblade Chronicles, which was a Wii game originally. Uh, yeah, looks better. 
so I'm not I'm not really sure. Maybe they've rushed it. I mean, they they seem to be trying to just force one out every year now. Yeah, because a bloody Pokemon Legends came out this year as well. It was like two big yeah, Pokemon games in one year. So I must have rushed something. Well, yeah, I mean, uh, Pokemon Legends, uh, from a look standpoint, where it's still not great, is better. Yeah. I think they have released a patch recently which fixes some of the frame rate issues, which is good. Yeah. It still looks crap, mate. It's still not. <laughs> it's still not great. Yeah. yeah. But, you know, gameplay-wise, it's really good. Yeah, that's good. But yeah, I do want to play it and myself. The world, is, the world is fun to explore. Yeah. But, yeah, it looks like ass. <laughs> but what I've heard from a uh, gameplay standpoint, it does sound really fun. I'm going to give it a try at some point. Yeah, it, it is really fun. You, you will like it, but... Yeah. Um, you know, Nintendo actually put a tweet out the other day after the patch came out, for, uh, the, the last patch came out, saying that we are listening to, you know, what you're saying. So more patch, you can expect more patches, basically. That's good. It's very good, because otherwise you're just playing a game that runs like shit forever. <laughs> yeah, we don't want that. No, not at all. <laughs> um, what else? Um, oh, you know what? For the, so I started... Um, yesterday, for the very first time, uh, the Ocarina of Time. Oh, interesting. Okay. So, funny yet. It's, I feel like it's a bucket list type game. Yeah, big time. Like one, one that you should play. Yeah. Um, I mean, you'll know this. You've played it, obviously. Of course. <laughs> uh, but I've started playing it on the uh, Nintendo Switch Online Plus Expansion Pack N64 thing. <laughs> And so far, I really like it. Good. Yeah. But the game's like, hey, we're not going to tell you anything. <laughs> yeah, go. Hey, listen. Just go. And I'm like, oh, this is what old games were like. <laughs> yeah, I've been, dis- I've been discovering that as well. Some games I've been playing on stream. Yeah. It's like, okay. Like that game called The Bagman Story on PS1. Literally nothing. It gives you like this in-game <laughs> quick manual, which is like 100 pages long. I'm not reading, I'm not reading that. <laughs> it's just like Quick a block manual of text. as well, you know? Yeah. It's just like a block of text. And it's like, yeah, I'm not. But literally, it, yeah. <laughs> it's impossible to play without looking up stuff. But I got through it eventually. <laughs> Good. But yeah, um, it tells you nothing. But you know what? I, I like it. I like, I love the art. I, I, admit, I love old games. Yeah. And, you know, I love the fact that I, we can play these N64 games on Nintendo Switch Online Plus Expansion Pack. I'm going to say this, the name every time because it's ridiculous. <laughs> Just call it Nintendo Switch Online. Don't call it Plus Expansion Pack. Yeah. Dickheads. Right. We've had this before anyway, haven't we? But, we have. <laughs> um, I, so far, I really like it. I know it's not massively long either, which also gives me some sort of hope that I can get through it. I'm playing it in handheld mode because I bought, just bought a new Switch OLED. Nice. So I'm uh, making making a lot of use of that currently. But yeah, um, when we finish this podcast tonight, I'm going to take my Switch upstairs and uh, hang out with Kay and play Ocarina of Time. Nice. Sounds good. Because it's all I've been able to think about all day apart from doing this. <laughs> how, how far have you gotten? Oh, not very. I've only started it yesterday. So oh. uh, I'm, I'm just about to go down to what I think is the first boss. Okay, cool. So I've been burning spider webs. Get your sticks out. And now there's a hole um, that's covered in spider web that I've just got to burn and then drop down into. Ah, yes. Cool. But it's good. Awesome. Yeah. Well, I could it's... do without the... I need to invert... Is there a way to... There's got to be a way to invert the up and down. Uh, there might be something in the switch settings. I'm not sure if there is in-game. There's... Back then, you I mean, to... for fuck's sake, yeah. back then it's like hit and miss. Some games will have it backwards, some games will have it normal. It's like because mm. down is up <laughs> and up is down, left and left is left and right is right. But yeah, it's weird, isn't it? Same thing with the uh, PS One games. Sometimes circle is confirmed, sometimes X is confirmed. And you got to yeah. try and <laughs> remember. Depends which where in the world the game was made. Like, um, I think if the game was made in Japan, circle is confirmed because look at yeah. Metal Gear Solid. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, uh, the good, good old days. Uh, I remember one time. <laughs> um, nope. Here he's gone. We'll never know. <laughs> I 
He's still there. So apparently, um, my AirPods read uh, that as I was trying to contact the person that. Um, <laughs> this is the problem with fucking technology. I've got AirPods in, I've got an Apple Watch on, and I'm doing it from my phone. <laughs> yeah. All because my laptop wouldn't play ball. <laughs> anyway, Steve borrowed Metal Gear Solid 3 from a friend back in the day. Yeah. And he couldn't get past the main menu because he was pressing X <laughs> and every single time it would just like quit out again. Yeah. And I remember him phoning me and being like, I can't start this fucking game. What do I need to do? And I'm like, oh, you need to press circle instead of X. Then lo and behold, he was able to get into the game. <laughs> hey. <laughs> it's funny. But yeah, yeah the, like, the, the slingshot it. thing on Zelda, it's like, for fuck's sake, you know, every time I go to shoot, I'm like shooting all over the place. Yeah, I know what you mean. It can be annoying. I think Croc was like that with the camera. Some, like, some, some weird PS1 game I had backwards controls. Spyro had an awful camera on the PS1. Oh, did it? Oh, God. Uh, thankfully, the, really uh, new, yeah, I played the newer ones, actually, but they thankfully fixed that issue. Mm. Yeah, they're good, right? You played all of them. Uh, yeah, yeah. Got band trapping all of them. Very easy. Nice. Very easy. Bantams. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah, really fun. Really fun. Good. Um, and that's pretty much all I've been playing, really. I've, oh, I've been playing a lot of stuff since we last recorded this, but I wish my watch had stopped talking to me. I put it on Do Not Disturb and everything. <laughs> cool. That's, that's so annoying. For fuck's sake. Oh, man. Technical issues podcast this is, and it's all my fault. <laughs> Nah. I was all ready to go. My laptop was fired up. My webcam was plugged in. My microphone was plugged in, and I was good to go. And then it didn't want to work. <laughs> yeah, it's just good old, good old classic games and graphs technology. <laughs> yeah. So, guys, if, if the sound isn't that great this week, it's my fault. But I'll make sure it's fixed for next time. Yeah, it's all good. Uh, well, that's something else we've been playing, by the way. Uh, it's more Rocket League. Played that on, they played that on Xbox. Oh, wow, really? Yeah, because they had like a thing on like the rewards of things, like earn, a, earn a achievement in one of these games and get points. And one of it was Rocket League. So, oh, okay. Mm. And yeah, I'm, I'm loving it. It looks amazing on Xbox Series X. The colors are really stand out. It's got the you know, uh, Dolby Vision thing on Xbox. Oh, the colors nice. all stand out. Super nice. I uh, just like that a lot. And yeah, it's really fun. Um, I played on the... Uh, like the what they call it, like the season mode, uh, and everyone's really good, and I'm not that good. <laughs> As it turns out, oh, I see man, is it? People are I see, maybe we should hop on together. Yeah, maybe we should do, do some like duo matches. That'd be good because I see yes, people. Yes, let's do that because I love Rocket League. It's so good. I love it so much. But I've seen people. I've done team like I was against people, and people on my team are like super, super good. They always play it all the time. They're you know, like flying through the air, hitting balls out of the air. I'm just here sitting on the ground being like, oh, cool. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm here too. <laughs> I've never seen like a replay of someone scoring a goal. You just see me jumping around in the background being like, yay, <laughs> I'm here too. <laughs> <laughs> go, go team. Yay. <laughs> on the back, team. Yay. In the back case, and the ball does come towards me. <laughs> if the ball does come yay. towards me. You see me charging towards it and then whew, miss it completely. <laughs> You're flying over the top. So, yeah. Damn it. <laughs> Yeah, I hate oh, yeah. when that happens. It's so annoying. Because you make yourself look like such a dick as well. Yeah, you get so Especially excited. You play with people who know what they're doing. Yeah, you get so excited, like, oh, is it? it? Is it my time? And then, whoosh, miss it. You miss it completely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're, hitting, we're hitting your own goal or something. <laughs> yeah, oh, man. But yeah, we should definitely do that. Absolutely, that'd be fun. Yeah, that'd be really good fun. I'd be, uh, be well up for that, for sure. Um, but yeah, it's... Uh, Oh man, it's good to be back doing this. I know that, you know, we've had some technical issues so far. My 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 mic stand has, <laughs> my sorry, my camera stand has been falling all over the place, and I'm having to use my AirPods to record, which is an ideal. But yeah, I'm glad we're back doing this. Yeah, me too. It's fun. I like talking to myself, <laughs> but at the same time, you know, uh, I you know I love the games and Grats. the games and Grats podcast is our. It's our it's our thing, isn't it? Absolutely. It's our podcast. Yeah. And he talked to my cat, but he doesn't really respond a whole lot. He's coming to sleep on my sofa. Yeah. Um, isn't that right, Tommy? He said yes. 
Yeah. yeah. Living, <laughs> leading a cat's life. Yeah, absolutely. Sleeping. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I've got lady balled up on the... I think you might be able to see her over my shoulder, actually. Oh, uh, yeah, I can actually. Let me just move my arm here and swivel around and touch. Door. There she is. <laughs> just flat out on that beanbag. <laughs> I'm proper, like, slouched down here because, like, because my camera thing keeps slumping. <laughs> it's like, go down with it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to use... Uh, next time we do this, I'm going to use Kay's gaming laptop. To, yeah, that's pretty good idea. To do, because that's way more powerful than my standard ass <laughs> laptop yeah good idea yeah so that's what i'll do next time cool go next time Woo. next time hopefully it won't Ooh, be yeah. like three months until the next one <laughs> no no, no. It'll be, it'll, what, we'll, what we'll do is we'll record on a tuesday night so it's tuesday now we'll record every tuesday night yeah that'd be good i'm up for that and so we'll do next we'll do like a christmas episode next week yeah okay it'll still be the same as every other week's podcast but just at christmas <laughs> pretty much yeah we'll have some like jingle bells over the top of the music or something <clears throat> there, you, there you go <laughs> there you go that's what we'll do um but yeah that's what that's what we that's that's what our aim is yeah. is to uh sort of stick a podcast out on a weekly basis going forward uh, at least that's what we want to do. Obviously, there's going to be some weeks where we won't be able to or whatever, but uh, that's certainly the aim right now. Absolutely. We're back, baby. We are back. <laughs> We're back. Technical issues straight away. We are back. Yes. Woo. <laughs> yeah, man. Um, did you want to uh, do... Is there gaming news or did you want to go straight into games of the year? Uh, we've got the uh, Game Awards announcements we can go through if you like. Yeah, let's do let's it. Blast through announcements quick. Uh, so Death Stranding 2... It's the biggest one for me. Love the first game. Yep. New one's coming out. Uh, so I don't think I've announced a date yet, but it's coming soon. Well, you know, Kojima, you know, he's announced it. <laughs> so that means it's coming at some point. Eventually. Yeah. Uh, but no, the trailer looks really good. Um, so it's the fragile with her baby and then baby gets lost or something. But yeah, it looks really good. And you see Sam there with his looking old, with his gray beard and gray hair. Yeah, you know, he's putting a lot of years at UPS doing deliveries and <laughs> yes. uh, and stuff like that. <laughs> he's been on strike a bit, but now he's back. We, yeah, I can't wait. We're that. not getting political. We're, we're not doing. We're not. We're not getting political on the podcast. No, 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 too much. Just, just, we don't politics. do politics here. Nah, nah. Uh, what else we got? Uh, nah, needs... this is a stupid podcast for stupid people. Exactly, <laughs> like us. A stupid podcast hosted by stupid people. There you go. Yeah, that's more like it. Like us. <laughs> uh, what else? Uh, Hades 2 got announced. Very cool. Yeah. Still need to play the first one. Which I will at some point, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> no, you won't. No. You, you, although you will like it. Yeah, I'm sure oh, That's a you game, that is, for sure. Absolutely. I love roguelikes. Um, you are from software. Announced Armored Core 6. Very cool. Never played an Armored Core game. Yeah. But... It's from software, so they know what they're doing. Yeah, d did they have that franchise before? Uh, yeah, apparently so. It's been them the whole time. I had no idea. If I'd known, I would have played it earlier. No, I, <laughs> I remember playing a demo for the first one on oh, yeah. PS1. Wow. Um, and I remember liking it, but, you know, it wasn't sort of like, you know, their games now, obviously, are, you know, synonymous with being brutally difficult. Yeah. So I've no idea if, if Armored Core is now going to sort of follow suit. Yeah, I'm curious to find out if they bring in elements of their other games, like Dark Souls games, or if mm. it's just going to be pure classic uh, Armored Core gameplay. Be interesting to find yeah. out. Yeah, that's cool though. Very cool. Uh, Final Fantasy 16 has a release date. Yay! Uh, which is, yeah. if I can find it, um, June 2023. 22nd of June, specifically. Uh, which isn't that long away, really. Well, we're, you know, six months away from it, I guess. Yeah, not not long at all. Uh, looks incredible. Can't wait for that. That's a uh, next gen only as well, or current gen only, which is nice. PS Five, mm, I think PC. And it sort of comes back yeah, to Xbox eventually at some point. You know. <laughs> yeah. No, but it probably won't. That's that's the thing. It probably just won't. <laughs> yeah. Well. Like when Final Fantasy VII um, remake just never made it to Xbox. It's a good point, actually. Yeah. That's a shame. It's weird because the one that just came out 
uh, Crisis Core, the prequel, is on Xbox. Which it is, is, yeah. It's on everything, I think, isn't it? Is it on Switch as well? Uh, it might be, actually, yeah. Weird. Yeah, I'm pretty certain it's on Switch, too, so... Yeah. That's what they're playing at. Oh, well. Um, have you got it? Oh, uh, I don't know, actually. Let's find out. Do, 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 do. No, have you, have you bought it? Oh, bought it. Yeah, I've got it on my shelf right now. I've got it installed yeah. on my PS5. Game today. To be else. played never? Yeah, no, no, I'll play it soon. Once once I've got the war, I'll play it because it's it's Final Fantasy. Got to be done. And uh, yes, it is also on Switch. Cool. Nice. Uh, right, that's that. Uh, we've got a game called Judas, which is made by Ken Levine, who made uh, Bioshock. And it does look very Bioshock, mm. Bioshocky. Yeah. Wonderful. Bioshocky. Have... Bioshocky. I wonder we'll have uh, Chris Jericho doing the music with Judas. <laughs> <laughs> or Lady Gaga. Uh, maybe, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, good stuff. Uh, we've got um, the Star Wars Jedi. Well, Super... What we should have, actually, instead of Jericho, we should have <laughs> the Marks singing it from AEW shows. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just gr- brand new Now presenting, shots. brand new band, the Neckbeards. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Juno Sin! Juno Sin! That'd be great. <laughs> what a happy girl! Then the ones that don't know the words are there as well. So they're just like yeah, yeah. in the video, yeah, mime yeah, yeah. <laughs> Like Learn the fucking words. You're AEW. You just learn the words. Uh, yeah. So that's that. I've got a new trailer for Star Wars <laughs> Jedi Survivor. <laughs> we look yeah, really man. Gone. Did you play the first one? It's installed on my Xbox. I will oh, eventually play it or delete it <laughs> with all these face. <laughs> uh, it's really good. Yeah, I've heard really good things. People have recommended, recommended it to me because it seems like a me game. Um, yeah, it's very, yeah. very good. Um, I'm super excited for the new one. I think that's next gen only, isn't it? Or current gen or uh, whatever we're supposed to call it. I don't... Yeah, I think so. I believe so. Good. Good. Excellent. Good. And then we can focus on 4K, 60 frames per second. The box of these fucking consoles says 8K. We feel like a million years away from that. Yeah, 8K, not even 8K TVs, like, readily available. They're like, and they're, they not are, they're for, like Not for normal pounds. people who earn normal money. No, exactly. <laughs> Strange. <laughs> yeah, but like 8K, but like 10 frames a second. Yeah, yeah, no, no frames per second <laughs> you could play. 8K games. Yeah, maybe play, maybe play Doom at 8K. The first Just, Doom? Yeah, original Doom, yeah. Original Doom, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Doom and Wolfenstein. Yeah. Like, I tell you that. Wolfenstein 3D at 8, 8K, but no <laughs> frames per second. Good stuff. Um, Do I have like 4? It's got a release date. Nice. Oh, June 6th. So excited, man. Yeah, it looks incredible. Like, holy shit. Yeah. Like, literally, holy shit, incredible. Yeah, can't wait for that one. Um, what else? Crash Team Rumble, a new Crash Bandicoot game, 414 multiplayer game. Looks a bit pants, if mm-hmm. I'm honest. <laughs> 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 yeah, you know what? Just don't focus your Crash energies on this. Just make another Crash game for Finn to throw across his room. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I need more things to throw. <laughs> I might, might have gone over my PTSD like... well, the next time they release a game. <laughs> Is this like in the same vein as Crash Bash from back in the day? Um, I don't really know. I know Crash Bash was sort oh. of like a Mario Party kind of thing, I think. And this seems more oh, like it was, a, yeah. It's more like a battle arena kind of thing, I think. Oh, for fuck's sake. Nobody wants that. Like, literally nobody wants that. Yeah, it's very strange. Well, who asked for it? <laughs> yeah, nobody. Nobody. I really hope we get a, a Crash Arena multiplayer. <laughs> oh well one person <laughs> you're in luck yeah here's just one game for you in particular yeah <laughs> just just for you one person it's all yours <laughs> cool i think that's about it all the big all the big uh news coming out of it anyway as far as i can tell yeah there was a, there's a ghostbusters vr game that's coming out but it's been it was announced a while ago but they announced it like properly and stuff coming to quest and and I guess PlayStation VR 2 when that launches. Cool. Awesome. Brand new news now. Yeah, I think that's all the big stuff. Mm. 
It's a, it's a slow time of year for news. I mean, the Game Awards is obviously usually, you know, noteworthy to a degree. Yeah. Well, if we're taking them, it came out. That's uh. Oh, have you played it? I haven't played it yet. It's on my PS5 along with and other things. Of course but, it is. Uh, <laughs> I'll play the game it. will be out and discounted by the time <laughs> you get round to playing the demo. Yeah, I think it's quite a short demo, so I'll blast through it. But <clears> it looks pretty fun. It isn't. It's not short. Oh, isn't it? Oh, never mind. You can save the demo. Can you really? Oh, God. All right, I'll, yeah. play, I'll play a little bit. I've played it. It's good, but it's it's like a, a weird hybrid-y type game. Like, I've not quite worked out what kind of game it's supposed to be yet, but it's pretty, but you can tell at this point that it's still, you know, in development. Yeah, that's fair. Cool. But it's it's, it's fine, you know. It's not it's not it's not a bad game. Yeah, I saw a solid uh, seven so far. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. All right, that's that. Uh, Going to go through some games that are coming out this month. What 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 date are we on today? Uh, 13th, so we're quite, quite a ways in. So do, do we not go through the games of the month and go through our games of the year? Uh, yeah, let's do that. Let's see if there's any big names. I know um, Witcher 3 PS5 version comes out tomorrow. It's pretty cool. Yeah, it does. Are you, are you jumping back in? Um, I mean, I'll say yes, but I won't. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 again, I'll install it on my PS5 and it'll just sit there for ages. Yeah, that's fair enough, yeah. Just taking up space until you need that space. <laughs> That valuable space, and then it'll be gone. Pretty much. Um, yeah, I think Fair all the big enough. names, big games of this month have come out already, so yeah. Yeah, High on Life came out today on Xbox Game Pass oh, for yeah. new creators of Rick and Morty that looks really fun, so I'm going to try that out at some point. Yeah, same here. That's cool. Awesome. But yeah, I think that's about it. All right, Finn. So we're going to do our personal top five games of the year. Now, this isn't going on critic consensus or none of that it's the top five games of this year to us personally and i feel yes. like we're gonna have very different lists uh yeah but, um yeah should we go what do we what do we do do we go you know you say your number five then i say my number five and so on and so forth or? yeah I think, I think that works that'd be good okay cool well, start. you know you start cool before i start let's go get a drink sorry two seconds <clears throat> Going to get a drink in the middle of recording a podcast. I'll oh. just carry the podcast for a little bit. It's I'll, all right. I'll cut this out. It's fine. Don't pause, the, don't, don't pause the recording or anything. It's all right. We'll just go for it. This is a mini episode of the Clubhouse podcast with technical issues. And it's uh, it's going to be a good one, dude. It's going to be a fucking good one. Let's do some dates while we're up. So Wrestling in Hinkley this coming Saturday, uh, the 17th of December. Millie McKenzie is going to be there. It's going to be very good. Um, that's my last show of the year. Finn is just taking a drink and he's about to put his headphones back on and he's back. Let's go. Hi. So I made a drink before I started and then just left it over there in the kitchen. Smart. That's good. <laughs> I, um, Kaylee made me a cup of tea in this uh, this penis mug. <laughs> nice. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> Which is the coolest mug ever. We saw it in HMV and we were like, oh, we're going to get that. And we went back to get it and it was sold out. Oh, no. And I asked the lady behind I had to go into HMV and ask the lady... <laughs> Like who works there? I was like, um, excuse me, I'm going to ask you a really um, immature question right now. She was like, oh, okay. I was like, uh, you had like a lime green cup with, um, and I was like, I'm really sorry for this, but I do love a willy on it. <laughs> nice. And she's like, it's one of our most popular cups. Um, wow. We should be getting some back in soon. Like, yes. <laughs> and then we got it. That's funny. I like it. But you put it on the counter to pay for it. I'm like, my wife really wanted this. Yeah. You're like, oh yeah, your, your wife, wife wanted this, yeah. did she? Mm. <laughs> yeah, she she wanted the really immature cup with a penis on it. <laughs> so there you go. That's that's the Willy Cup story. Nice. <laughs> Thank who didn't you. Love, who didn't love a Willy Cup? Hey, look, who doesn't love a Willy Cup? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. All right. So you go first. So this is our top five games of the year for 2022. Yes. Cool. All right. My number five. Don't hate me, internet. I haven't finished it yet, so it may change. Oh, God, here we go. <laughs> Number five, God of War, mate. Ragnarok. A great game with some issues, in my opinion. <laughs> some Finn issues, which probably aren't issues for other people. Finn issues. <laughs> <laughs> Fish issues. Fish issues, there you go. <laughs> um, but yeah, 
the story is incredible, acting is incredible, um, graphically incredible, gameplay is mostly incredible. It's just a bit, a bit slow for me. But that's okay. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure I'll, I'll grow to love it. <laughs> uh, that's my number five. So number five. That's okay though. Yeah, I've it, not even got it in mind, and it's easily going to be one of my favorite games of the year. But I've not put it in because I haven't finished it. That's fair. So all these games that are in my list are, uh, we'll do some honourable mentions. But um, these games that are in my that are in my personal top five are games that I've I've beaten this year and very much enjoyed. Cool. Right. What's your number five? My number five is Sifu. Oh yeah. Okay. Cool. So the the martial arts um, clock game that was exclusive to ps5 is now on switch as well uh but i loved it you know i, I like games like that anyway it reminded me it's like a hybrid of other games that have been out so do you remember um oh god damn what the hell's that is it called bulletproof on xbox 360 oh bullet storm maybe no not bullet storm oh well, i think I, know oh, god mean, damn yeah. it, man. I can't remember it it was a very early PS3 and Xbox 360 game. Mm. Uh, either way, and it was like that was like a kung fu type game, and that was good. Cool. Um, but yes, yeah, like a hybrid, so it's like a mix of different games. But I loved, um, I just loved it. I thought the progression was very clever because obviously you age as you die. Yeah, you, you die and you age, and you can go all the way. So I think it's like 75, and then that's game over. Um. But it was just so good. Like graphically, it was great. It's not an overly long game, but graphically, it looked fantastic on PlayStation Five, and it just played so well. And I can't recommend it enough. It's a very, it's only a cheap game, but it's um, yeah, one of the very best that's come out this year. And they've they've done a really good job of like putting new content out for it and making it easier for people as well because. You know, there was no difficulty settings when it first came out, and it was fucking brutal. Yeah, it was really, like, really difficult. Brutally difficult. But um, they they then put in difficulty settings, which made it a lot more accessible for everybody, and I'm glad that they did, because shit people like me got the chance to play through the entire thing, and it was very, very good. Awesome. So my number five is Sifu. Excellent. Good stuff. Uh, my number four... A game I'd expect from me, but is uh, I had a lot of, a lot of fun with it. It was uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles: Shredder's Revenge. It's all played via Ooh, Game Pass. Oh, nice! Yeah, I love a retro game. It's done in a retro mm. side scrolling beat 'em up style. Just so much fun. A classic arcade beat 'em up. You can't beat it. Just, just... And it was perfect, right? It was, it was so great. good. It was yeah, spot on. It's exactly what it needed to be. Um, sprite all looks really good. Very colourful. It's just yeah, it was just mm-hmm. fun. Everyone felt, you know, characters felt unique in their own way. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, very but mashy. That's what it needs to be. Um, but yeah, just great. It's really, really fun old school Turtles game. If you're a fan of old school beat em ups like that, or Turtles, or both, then uh, you should definitely give it a try. I think it's still on Game Pass. Yeah, I adored it. It's still on Game Pass, yeah. Cool. But yeah, go play it. It's great. Yeah, I totally adored it. It's not in my top five, but it is one that I beat this year. And it's, you know, obviously it's not overly long. It's like a, well, was it? A few hours probably at most. Yeah, you get to it in a day or two. Yeah, but it's really, really good. Um, so that would be in my honourable mentions for sure. But yeah, great game, great choice. Cool. Uh, number four for me is Stray. Nice. I like adored it absolutely adored it i just thought it was it was so unique in um you know the the main character was a cat for a start (laughs) and you know i love cats but yeah it was so incredibly unique and it was beautiful and you know if you've not played it and you've got a ps5 and you subscribe to the playstation plus thing um you should definitely play it because it's just so good you play uh as a cat it's just like a little narrative adventure not overly long and basically you get separated from your cat friends at the beginning of the game and you fall into this sort of uh cyberpunky like futuristic uh city that's populated with uh robots and you basically make your way you know 
through the game completing various tasks and it's it was very very good very unique uh again a stunning stunning game yeah it looks and, amazing. yeah it was announced what feels like forever ago now but um yeah it finally came out this year and it was just it was it's really brilliant like superb game yeah uh well, funny enough that is my number three game of the year it's nice true. And and yeah, like you said, I agree with everything you said. It's a great, great <clears> game. <throat> Tells a good story. Um, another thing I like it's it's not like a, a talking cat or like a cartoon cat. It's it's just a cat. You're playing as a regular cat who does regular cat things. Um, yeah. And yeah, I like that a lot. I'd say I love cats as well. My cat's over there, feeding himself right now. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah, just super, super good. So well made. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Stunner. Good stuff. Okay. Yeah. So my number three is Horizon Forbidden West. Nice. I really liked it. Um, I, I did really like it. I was expecting to be blown away more by it. That's fair. But again, I think that's the fact, you know, going back to what I said earlier about there being a PS4 version, I think that, you know, was what's holding it back yeah um but you know i will hop back into it when the dlc comes out and stuff next year and i would like to go back in and do more of the side quests and stuff like that but i felt when it first came out when i first played it that the there was some some graphical issues only minor but you know they they put a lot of patches into it to try and sort of eradicate those um but it just didn't blow me away the way that i wanted it to but i from a gameplay perspective and a storytelling perspective and you know graphically it is great but not mind-blowing great like i feel that god of war is yeah um but i you know everything else the combat the exploration the traversal uh the the performances in the game although some of them i think some of the sound issues are a little bit iffy like you can tell that they're in a studio because it's just super fucking like echoey and they've yeah. not mixed the sound that great but generally it is truly a phenomenal game awesome. and a, a worthy follow-up to the, the the first one zero dawn yeah it's another one i haven't played yet i do bound playing it soon uh hopefully before the vr game comes out i want to play that as well mm -hmm. um speaking of the sound issues actually i don't know if it's just me or if you, anyone else noticed this in god of war um for some reason the 3d audio like some of the sound effects sound really weird and low quality it's like like footsteps in particular sound like almost like like nes games <laughs> uh, yeah it's very strange mm. you know what I, I haven't paid that much attention to that and i do play it when with my pulse headset on yeah um and it you know i've not really noticed it so much but i think maybe now that you've said it i might pay a bit more attention um yeah, well, well, yeah that's an interesting one actually yeah, when I turn off 3D audio, it sounds fine. It's just when it's when I turn on 3D audio, it's just like really weird. Like, mm. how to explain? It's very low quality, like compressed sound effects. Okay. It's, like, it's mostly footsteps and like when you open chests and things, it sounds very strange. I don't know why. Oh, okay. I'm trying to wear these headphones as well. It's the same sort of thing. Weird. Yeah, very weird. Anyway. So yeah, that's my number three game. Yes, good. Sorry, sidetracks. <laughs> No, uh, no. That's two. what this podcast is all about. We're getting sidetracked. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, my number two is Sonic Frontiers. Yay. You have to be on there somewhere. Um, high up. High up. But yeah, you spoke about it earlier, but yeah, it's just, just phenomenal. It's a phenomenal Sonic game, and I hope they continue to go in that direction going forwards. I look forward to the DLC next next year. And uh, <clears> yeah, yeah, go Sonic. Woo. Have you have you beat it? Have you? Or? I have. Platinum Trophy. Oh, nice. I get a round Congratulations. Of Wait. You get a round of applause. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <Good> stuff. <laughs> I missed that. Me too. <laughs> I missed that a lot. That's so funny, man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, cool. So, yeah, Sonic Frontiers. I mean, Sonic Frontiers is awesome. Yeah, so cool. If that's my number two. How about you? My number two is The Last of Us Part One. Cool. Okay. So the, the the PlayStation Five remake of The Last of Us. So built, you know, from the ground up. 
Um, it was great. I, I absolutely adored it. It looked, you know, it's The Last of Us, but it just looks better. And going back to the, the audio, uh, it's the best audio I've possibly ever heard in a video game. Cool. Yeah. The, absolutely I'm a, superb yeah, I'm sound effects and, yeah, yeah very I'm, good. I remember part two being really good in that department as well. Like being able to hear yeah. exactly where people are. Like I remember someone hearing someone yeah. up above me, behind me, and there's someone coming down the stairs. I was like, "Oh, that's cool." <laughs> yeah, I mean, as far as far as remake, I I know it's a remake, but it's a very, very, very high standard of remake. Like, it's just very, it's just it's outstanding. It took what was already uh, a masterpiece and a classic, and just made it better for the you know the PS5. Yeah. And for the PS5 only as well, because obviously it didn't come out on PS4 because it didn't need to. But yeah, it, it's, it was really phenomenal and I thoroughly enjoyed it from start to finish. Uh, again, you know, I explored a lot more this time than I did ever before. Cool. So I just wanted to see everything. I wanted to see this rebuilt, stunning world. But everything was just, about, everything about it was just so great, down to the, the tiny little details in, you know, just brickwork and just, puddles and shit like that it was it was it was it's really excellent naughty dogger just phenomenal next level yeah. but yeah the last of us part one is my number two game of the year cool good stuff <clears throat> uh so my number one uh which i think we can probably guess by now uh is of course elden ring latest... oh you shot me <laughs> i know you're right shocker <laughs> it's the latest game from, yeah. from software um it's yeah it's just incredible um it takes everything from like Dark Souls and stuff like that, and puts it in a huge open world, and it's just, it's just excellent. This it's close to being the perfect game for me. There's so much to do, so much to see. Um, it's another game that doesn't really tell you anything, gives you like a vague direction. It's like that's where you want to go. Yeah. But also, you've got this massive world and go and do whatever you want. Um, and yeah, it, it encourages you to explore, and if you go in one direction, you just die. <laughs> Everything's really strong. And he looks like, okay, don't go that way. Don't go to the Caleb yet. Cause that's just going to F me up. Um, <laughs> mm. um, and yeah, it's just, it's so good. The boss fights are excellent. Do you think... Enemy design, 10 out of 10. Not as good as Sonic Frontiers? Well, pretty close. <laughs> but no, um, it's, it's great. It's so good. Do you think From Software go down this sort of open world route more now? Uh, I, yeah, I imagine, I imagine they'll be in Elden Ring too. At some point, uh, mm -hmm. probably not for a while. Obviously, we've got uh, Armored Core or Armored, whatever it was, six coming out eventually for the next game. Uh, I think after that, I imagine we'll get either an Elden Ring two or something in a similar sort of vein as Elden Ring. Okay. Yeah, because one, one of the endings of Elden Ring sounded like, or felt like it was like leading to something, something else. It was like that could be DLC or whether it's DLC or a sequel. I'm not sure, but yeah. Hmm. Interesting. I mean, it's received unanimous praise. Obviously, it won the Game Award for Game of the Year. I've Ooh. played it, and I've played a fair bit of it as well with my brother-in-law, and I, I like it a lot. I, I, I think it's it's very, very good. Yeah. Uh, I think it looks beautiful. I think it plays incredibly. Um, like a typical From Software game. I mean, you know, their track record absolutely speaks for itself. Yep. Um, it isn't in my game of the. It isn't in my top five, but it, it would definitely get an honourable mention because I do think it is. Uh, it is excellent. It really is. Yeah, it's so good. there's so many different ways to play it as well. You can go full on strength and smash things with a big sword. Uh, you can be like like a speedy ninja with like a little dagger or whatever. Be using magic and yeah, there's so much you can do. It's amazing. Yeah, and these games are so special to people as well. I mean, you can see why they're held in such high regard. I mean, obviously, then they're not for everybody. It's very it's not even, at this point it's not even niche but it's you know it's, it doesn't and it does have a lot of fans but it doesn't have mass appeal if you understand what i mean by that it's like it's not yeah. for casual gamers it's for it's, it's for somebody it's for people who like a real challenge yeah absolutely you're not gonna uh, go in it expecting like a call of duty level <laughs> game you know what i mean like it's not gonna, not gonna not yeah, easy course, to last yeah. doing it weekend or anything it's a uh, it's an actual proper proper commitment to get through, but yeah. Uh, yeah. Also, the atmosphere is incredible as well, especially in uh, Caleb, which is like the high level area. 
It's like I legitimately didn't want to go there because it was so creepy and everything was super strong and just the atmosphere is like, all right, I'm going to sneak through here as quick as I can. I don't want to be here. <laughs> I'll get what I want and leave because it was just like, it yeah. creeped me out. And it's great. I love that kind of thing. I think that's what's so awesome about it because, you know, you can go to different parts of the map and you genuinely do not know what you're going to run into, yeah. like what dangers away. And it's, you know, it, again, it goes, you know, we, we've, we've spoke about it before over the years, like with Bloodborne and Dark Souls and Sekiro and games like that, you know, obviously other From Software titles where you get that sense of achievement, like a real sense, satisfying sense of achievement when you do get beyond, you know, some of these, uh, you know, walls as such. Yeah. So it also gave me one of, my, one of my biggest jump scares ever in a game. Uh, this is by not yeah. being a horror game. Yeah, it's like an NPC you trade items to. Uh, and after you give him a certain amount of items, uh, he attacks you. But he doesn't attack you straight away. He leaves a minute, so I decided to walk away. looked at my menu. So, okay, yeah, whatever. And suddenly, it's boosh, while I was looking at my map or something. Knocks me, go, <laughs> knocks me flying through like, the door. Luckily, he's so big, he couldn't fit through the door, so I was safe. But I was like, Jesus Christ, <laughs> get the hell out of me. But I love that kind of thing. It's so good. Yeah, I think that's awesome. And I'm not surprised that that's your top game of the year. Yeah, it's so good. Um, yeah, I'm not. I'm not surprised at all. But yeah, it's it's a it really is a fantastic game. Absolutely. So well done from Software. You get the Finn Steel Award yeah. for 2022. How oh, yeah, you do? <laughs> the most prestigious award you can get. Yeah. <laughs> Did they get a round of applause for the Finn Steel Award? Of course. <laughs> We should absolutely make a badge for the Finn Steel Award and put it on the front cover of Elden Ring. Yeah, we definitely should. <laughs> yeah. That's what we'll do. We'll do that. That sounds good. Right. My number one game of the year is probably not one that people are expecting to be my number one game of the year. Okay. Um, my game of the year is a Nintendo Switch game. Nice. And in my opinion, it's one of just such incredible high quality that I honestly, anybody who has a Nintendo switch should play it. And it's, uh, it's Kirby and the forgotten land. Nice. <laughs> That's awesome. And it is absolutely phenomenal. Like it's, it's not just, you know, my, one of my favorite games, well, my favorite game this year, but I think it's one of the best platform games ever made. Awesome. I get <laughs> it. does look really good. It's so yeah, it's just so unique. The different abilities that Kirby has and that he can transform into, it just makes every single part of the game unique to play because there's always something new to learn and a new way to play. And it makes you want to go back and, you know, use the abilities that you unlock later in the game. It, it really is just so good. And the environments are, are brilliant. You know, it ranges from... You know, casino type levels, you know, akin to what you would see in Sonic to, you know, scenes that you would sort of see in The Last of Us, like with, wow. you know, cars with gr moss and grass and stuff, you know, covered and, and, you know, derelict buildings and things like that. It really is that kind of varied game. And awesome. it feels a lot longer than it is. It's only a very, it's only a short-ish game. Um, you're probably looking at around 20 hours ish, uh, but it, it, it's so good and it impressed me just so much that I couldn't put it down. Um, you know, we went away earlier on this year and during sort of down times where we're just sitting and chilling. I was, you know, my time was just spent playing Kirby in the in the Forgotten Land because it was just so addictive and so good that it, it I just I couldn't put it down and. Yeah, I can't, I can't recommend it highly enough to anybody who owns a Nintendo Switch. It's really that good. Awesome. Yeah, that's what I really want to play. It's on my Christmas list to Santa. Um, <laughs> um, but I've heard nothing but good things about Kirby. And uh, I like Kirby as well. I like his old games on, I think I played his uh, 3DS once. It's pretty good. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, that's great. It's a good choice on number one. I like it. Yeah, so uh, Kirby... And the uh, Forgotten Land, you win the Sunny G Award for 2022. Congratulations. Yay. 
I'm sure Nintendo will be thrilled. <laughs> yeah, sued. Whoops. Yeah, <laughs> it was sued, so hard, for, sued for talking yeah, about um, their game in a positive light on a podcast. <laughs> yeah. There you go. No, 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 There's been a lot of it. hand in this episode if you're watching the video on. <laughs> yeah, a lot of hand. I get my desk so hard and move the camera. <laughs> there we go. Just so excited about our games of the year. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, good varied lists. Yeah. I, like I know it. we had a couple of similar ones in there. Stray. I think I might have been the only one, actually. But, yeah. Um, a great year for games again. And I'm super excited for 2023. But we'll talk about that maybe on next week's podcast. What's to come for 2023, yeah. game wise? Sounds good to me. Any uh, honorable talk mentions? About what we're hyped up for. Um, Ghostwire Tokyo. Oh, yeah. Cool. I very much enjoyed that. Played that from start to finish. Um, there was something just so... Uh, it was the atmosphere in the game that hooked me in. Yeah. Really, uh, cool. really enjoyed it. Very, very cool. So that's well worth a look if you get a chance to look at that. Uh, God of War, of course, gets an honourable mention. Um, uh, what else? What else? What else? Are they, there's, there's so many, I think. Uh, I want to shout out a little game studio called um, Retro Soft Games. Oh, yeah. Retro Soft. No, not RetroSoft. They did wrestling. Um, either way, they, they make sports games, um, like uh, really, really good sports games, like Retro Goal and Retro Bowl and, and stuff like that. And they, they make absolutely phenomenal addictive games. Uh, okay. So I um, want to shout them out. They they make really good stuff. It's good that I've forgotten the name of the, the, uh, the company. But <laughs> they make really good games. Retro Goal is really good on Switch. Um, yeah. WWE 2K22, I want to give an honourable mention to because it's leaps and bounds an improvement on, you know, probably the last four, maybe in fact, probably even more than that instalments of WWE games. So that, um, there's others, but I just can't remember. That's fair. But yeah, I was, I was going to say WWE as well because yeah, I played a lot of that. Uh, White Faction could yeah, me too. go straight in the bin. Uh, not a fan of that. <laughs> Everything so else. pointless. So pointless. Such a shit mode. Yeah. Like, if that online, that would make sense because you can take cards online. But it's just a single player collectible thing. It's like, why? What's the point? Yeah. But I, I would imagine if they bring it back for 2K23, they'll put it online because uh, the NBA games, they have a, a similar mode called My my Team. Yeah. It's hopefully they do that next year or just scrap it completely. Mm. Either or. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, that. Um, Otherwise, I'm going to say uh, Returnal Ascension DLC or update it was really good. Okay. Really, really good. More Returnal, always a good thing. Uh, Nintendo Switch Sports had a good time with that. Just, just got a. Good, yeah. Has it got a golf update? Which is very cool. He has just had a golf update, yeah. Good stuff. And the other one was uh, Sonic Origins, the old Sonic game collection, which is cool. Oh, okay, yeah. Uh, the only downside of that is you have to replace some of the music in Sonic 3, which is a shame. Uh, and they've had a few glitches as well. Yeah, something to do with Michael Jackson, was it? Is yes. that, that a real thing? Yeah, yeah, because Michael Jackson apparently had something to do with making the music and they did some sort of dispute over the copyright claims of it, so they've changed it. I mean, what? I know, it's mental. So It's mental. <laughs> so it's insane, yeah. But there's like a comparison thing on YouTube uh, with like songs that sound an awful lot like Michael Jackson songs. I think we really hear it. It's like, okay. I see what they did there. But New Star Games is the name of that company that New made Star Retro Games. Goal and Retro Bowl and uh, New Star Soccer and New Star Manager. Great, great video game company. Cool. Maker of good, fun sports games. Sorry to interrupt, but it just came into my head and I need to get it out there quick. <laughs> but I forgot again. Nice. Good stuff. Uh, yeah, good collection of games. There are some bugs, but I think most of them have been ironed out by now. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. That's about it, I think. Good stuff. That is the Games and Graps podcast, Games of the Year. Yeah. Good stuff. Let's get one more round of applause. We'll, we'll, we'll put... <laughs> <laughs> I love I love how it peters out. The, yeah, yeah. Uh, the, the applause. <laughs> but yeah, whoa. Oh. <laughs> I love that. It's just awesome. Um, so yeah, that was that was. Good, good stuff. Let's talk wrestling for a bit. Yeah, wrestling. Cool. Yeah. So, uh, um, quite a year of wrestling. Not much really happened. Uh. <laughs> no, not much. To be fair, 
not much at all actually. Uh, WWE still WWE. <laughs> uh, yeah, AEW still the greatest thing since sliced bread. <laughs> uh, yeah, I can't think of anything that happened. Yeah, but yeah. Um, <laughs> so, I saw a thing today. Uh, Wall Street Journal uh, put a thing up saying that Vince McMahon was um, uh, pre- wanting to go back to WWE. Yeah, I saw that as well. <laughs> I, don't. It's not going to happen. <laughs> no, I don't think it will. Uh, I don't think it's going to happen. Um, I think the wording of it is fairly misleading, especially if you look at the headlines. I think what it is, he was perhaps contemplating going back to WWE, but now more allegations have come up and lawsuits have come up. I mean, it wasn't going to happen anyway, I don't think. I mean, WWE is a much better product and seemingly a much happier place without him. Yeah. The guy's 108 years old. He doesn't need to go back. <laughs> um, just take your money and fuck off, you know? <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> but uh, WWE's been so good recently. I really, really enjoyed it. It has. Um, it's so many awesome returns as well. Um, here we had Tegan Knox turn up the other week, which is cool. Yeah. Um Lots of guys like Dexter Loomis, um, Johnny, Johnny Gargano. Gargano. Exactly, yeah. Candice LeRae. Or Candice LeRae, sorry. Um, yeah. Elias. Eli- you know? <laughs> yeah, Elias, yeah. His brother's gone. Um, so Elias is back. His brother's gone. His been, brother's been released. Yeah, but Elias sorry, is Ziggy. back. You know, the return of some, some actual <laughs> full names, Tommaso Ciampa. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Good, actual names, yeah. Austin Theory. <clears throat> Austin Theory, yeah. Instead of just Theory, which sounds the most ridiculous ever. <laughs> yeah. Um, Matt Riddle. But yeah, but you know, WWE has been so good this year, and you know, since since the old man left, you know, Triple H has taken the reins, and you know, the whole vibe around WWE is a lot better. He's made Triple H has sort of he's gotten around the Universal Titles and the WWE ch- uh, Championship only being on one brand by making the United States Championship feel a lot more important. Yeah, the Intercontinental Championship has felt a lot more important. It's just brought a lot more prestige to to things across all brands. NXT 2.0 is gone. It's now just NXT again. Really? And everything is just a lot more positive. Um, as soon as I saw the headline about Vince McMahon wanting to return to WWE, I just thought that isn't going to happen. No. It's been... Straight away, I, I just rubbished it in my mind and thought that isn't going to happen. There's no way. Yeah, there's no way. Like everything's everything's improved. Like even like views and things like that have improved. Yeah, views up, money's up, make more money than they ever have in a long, long time. Yeah, more pay per view buys, all the good stuff. Yeah, so there's there's no way he's back in that. He goes back to that company. Plus, you know, there's a a, a pretty damning documentary airing tonight on really? Vice. Okay. Uh, yeah, so Vice, you know, obviously airs Dark Side of the Ring, and there's a Vince McMahon documentary airing on there tonight and i don't anticipate uh that that's going to be make good viewing for the old man yeah but you know it's good riddance wrestling has moved on from vince mcmahon wwe has moved on from vince mcmahon and the world should move on from vince mcmahon it doesn't doesn't he's, he's a he should be a, you know you, you you praise him for all the the good stuff that he did and what he has done for professional wrestling over the years, not just in America, but across the world. Um, but at the end of the day, the guy's a piece of shit human being. <laughs> he pretty much. And in 2022, he doesn't quite fit the narrative. Yeah. He's... So he needs to be just a, a nothing factor going forward, in my opinion. Yeah, in this way. Uh, yeah, the allegations aren't going to get any better towards him. So... Yeah, just no. needs to go away and go in a hole somewhere and hide. I'm not come back, definitely. Yeah. Absolutely. Doesn't even need to be mentioned. Doesn't need to be his name doesn't need to be mentioned in WWE. It doesn't need to be mentioned outside of WWE. It just doesn't need to be mentioned. It's you know, he's done. His time is done in WWE and with professional wrestling in general. Um but and WWE is a better place for it. Professional wrestling is a better place for it. Yeah, big time. It's professional wrestling again for a start. Yeah, yeah exactly. it's still sports yeah. entertainment, but it's professional wrestling again. You know, you're getting you're getting twenty minute matches on Raw and SmackDown. Yeah, I'd say the titles, uh, the card titles actually mean something. Like Gunther's been looked yeah. super super strong. It's been before he was like 
like barely even used on TV. Yeah, I mean, the, the rumor is that it's going to be uh, Gunther versus Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania. Wow, imagine that. <laughs> at least that's one of the, the spoke of matches. I mean, Jesus, you know, that's an unbelievable looking match. Big meaty men slapping meat, as Biggie would say. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> but yeah, WWE is a better place now. And NXT is flourishing again as well. Uh, let's talk about that. Like, did you watch um, Deadline? I did, yeah. Really good. Really enjoyed it. Was it was really good. Top to bottom, great show. Yeah. Really good. Good to see New Day on there. Uh, I like their match with yeah. a lot. Very funny and very just a good match in general. Very entertaining match. Yeah. And pretty very deadly, entertaining like. match. Pretty, yeah, pretty deadly. We have been great as NXT Tag Team Champions. I can see them moving on, to be honest. Yes, boy. Um, but uh, yes, boy. Yes, boy. But, yeah, they're, they're, <laughs> they're really great. But it's great to see New Day. It, it gives them something else to do as well because, you know, a little stale on the main roster, just doing the same things over and over again. But they can go to NXT, some fresh challenges there, uh, some fresh matchups for them. And um, yeah, it'd be good to see them down there for a, a little while. But I thought I thought the um, the Iron Survivor matches were great. A great new yeah. gimmick that I definitely want to see more of. Yeah, same here. I did think the time in the penalty box was a bit short, at 90 seconds. It felt like by the time they got there, they were straight back out again. So maybe increase that to a couple minutes. <clears throat> or just wait until they're in the box before we start the counter or something. I don't know. But otherwise... That. Yeah. Definitely that. I mean, I think 90 seconds is long enough, but wait till they're in it. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, but otherwise, yeah, as you said, really, really good idea. Really enjoy one match. Mm. Uh, and yeah. both of them were done differently as well. It's easy yeah. to sort of fall into a trap with like new gimmick matches uh, to sort of follow a similar pattern while you're trying to bed them in. But uh, I thought the men's and the women's both followed very different patterns in terms of the way that they were booked. Yeah. And I, I thought that was, I thought they were both done excellent and it made both of those matches feel incredibly unique. Yeah, I agree. Well, the, the men's match was obviously very pinfall heavy and you didn't know who was going to win even going down to the wire. Whereas the women's match wasn't as pinfall heavy. There was a, a bit more, uh, it was a bit more tactical in the way that it was done uh, and, the, and, the, and the way that the, uh, the, the pinfalls played out. Uh, obviously, to the eventual winner, Roxanne Perez, who I'm a big fan of. Yeah, she's great. Uh, but yeah, I, I thought I thought that they were both done in a way where they felt different, even though they were the same kind of match, which I think is, you know, the the, the perfect and correct way to do gimmick matches. Yeah, it's really cool. Um, as I said, once always going to win going in uh, on either match. Uh, I do think the right people won in the end. Uh, yeah, do like Grayson well a lot. I do think it's a bit of a dick, but I think that's kind of the point. I think it's supposed to be. <laughs> it's to think yeah. it's a bit of an arsehole. Um For sure, yeah. Yeah, a bit like the Miz in that way. I like it. Um, yeah, like he's a more annoying Miz. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah, it really is. Um, but no, it's good. I like it. Great matches. I look forward to seeing more stuff like yeah. that going forwards. Yeah, and I, another thing that I love about WWE at the minute is the pay per view cards or the premium live event cards, whatever you know. <laughs> um, they're they you know they're pretty much sticking to that six matches, yeah, which is the correct amount of matches for any event. Yeah, agreed. Be because they get time to tell the story that they're that, that they're telling, and they get ch they get time to showcase the talents of the people in those matches as well. Like twenty five minutes was the perfect amount of time for the Iron Survivor matches. Yeah. Uh, I thought New Day and Pretty Deadly, Deadly was great. Uh, the weaker match, the weakest match on the card was probably Alba Fire versus Isla Dawn. Oh, yeah. But I don't think it was bad by any stretch. No, but I, like I could do one. without the supernatural stuff. But yeah. hey, look, it's wrestling. Wrestling's meant to be, you know, sort of ridiculous in a way. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say the same thing. I could do without the spooky bollocks. But otherwise, yeah, I thought it was a good match. Yeah. Uh, and I thought Apollo and Brom. Bron Breaker was really excellent. I, li I like the way that they sort of made them out to be very similar style athletes. And when you watch them, you're like, oh, shit, okay. Yeah, because you know, we're so used to seeing Apollo flying around and doing the moonsaults and stuff like that. And the way that Bron Breaker is put across is, you know, he's a big, beefy guy. Yeah. 
but he does all the same shit. And you know, I, I didn't really click with it until I saw them wrestle each other and they were doing the same stuff. And you were like, oh, wow, okay. Bron Breaker really is a, a super hybrid athlete. But also, Apollo really is a super super hybrid athlete. And it, it's crazy. But uh, I thought I really enjoyed the pacing of the, of the, the championship match. Um, it wasn't the best match of the night. I thought the men's Iron Survivor match was the best match of the night. Um, but I thought it, it did very... I thought they did a great job with the match. Yeah. I really like Apollo. I've always liked Apollo. It's as good as he's, you see he's finally getting a chance to show what he can do properly. I'm that glad they ditched the yeah. Darth gimmick that we had before with the weird accent he had. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I like him a lot. As I said, I think I agree with the best match of the night being at Men's uh, Iron Survivor. I did really, really enjoy New Day match as well. We're pretty deadly. Yeah, me too. Um, and yeah, no, good time all around. I Good match card. Good yeah, match I thought it, I thought it was a very strong pay per view. If you were going to give it a school grade, because that's what we do here, yeah. what would you give it? Um, I give it. A, a, I gotta give it an A, I guess. I can't really thought much about yeah. it. Yeah. No, same. So day. it gets the games and so it gets the games and graps A award. Yeah. NXT deadline. A out of ten. Wait. <laughs> a A A out of Z. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but no. So good stuff. yeah, um, it gets an A, which is which is a good, a good rating to get. So NXT deadline, you are excellent. Congratulations. Yes. GG. GG indeed. Now, I wanted to ask you um, just on you know one last thing. I wanted to ask you about Sasha Banks and your opinion mm. on the the rumors of her being done with WWE. Uh, from January onwards, and basically the fact that she won't be returning to the company, and not only that, but the fact that um, it looks like she is going to eventually end up in AEW as Soraya's partner in January. Okay. But apparently she's booked for New Japan, Wrestle Kingdom, and then a few days after that. Yeah, I saw that, actually. Um, I do think she'll be back eventually, maybe towards the end of next year. Or perhaps 2024. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, it's strange what's happened there. Um, I would have thought once Triple H is back and seeing you know, how like, the women's tag team titles are actually getting used properly now, she would have been inclined to come back. Um, but no, maybe she just wants to go and do new things. You know, That's completely fair as well. Just could sure. try the world because she's only been ever wrestled in WWE as far as I know. So if she wants to go yeah. and get some more experience elsewhere, that's I can totally appreciate that. And uh, yeah, yeah, if you just pop up in AEW, then cool. Yeah, I'm yeah. For it. I think she will. I mean, so so um, it's Soraya and a mystery opponent against um, Britt Baker and uh, Jamie Hayter. Cool. In yeah. January, and that's when Sasha Banks is free. Now, do you think? I mean, people are saying that this is a huge loss for WWE. Do you see it as a huge loss? I mean, I don't, and I don't get why people do either. I, I've, I, I'm so confused about it. Like, I see nothing but praise for Sasha Banks, and I, I like Sasha Banks. I think she's, as a personality, she's great. She's got the look. She can talk, but I've never thought she's a, a an outstanding wrestler. Yeah. That's fair. I don't think it's like a, as big a loss as people are saying. As, uh, I do like Sasha Banks mm-hmm. a lot. I think she's a great wrestler. But the the the, um, the roster is so huge now with female wrestlers. So much talent on there. They don't mm-hmm. need they don't need anyone to be fair. Like if Charlotte Flair disappears, fine. <laughs> There's plenty of other people on there. Uh, or same thing with like anyone like Bailey, Becky. You know, if they were having to go, it would be a shame. It would be a loss, but it wouldn't be a huge loss. If that makes sense. There's so many the boss is so huge. No, so I agree. Talent. Um one one person isn't gonna make a difference. No, I don't think so either. I mean uh, and same goes for Naomi. I don't know what the plan is with her. I've not really heard anything, but you know, I, I feel the same way about her. I think, you know, she's got the look, she's got the personality, but she's not a she's not a great wrestler. Mm. But people are sort of talking like Sasha's gonna go and put on you know, five star classics in Japan and it's gonna be a massive player in AEW. But I just don't see it. She has star quality, there's no doubt about it. 
but I, I've never thought she's the strongest wrestler, and I still don't now. I mean, it's you know, there there are women, there are other women I would rather see wrestle, you know, in the top spots in the companies than her. Yeah, and I, I'm not okay. trying to shit on her. I th- again, I think she's a superstar. I think she is, but she's a superstar. She's not a great wrestler. Yeah, I see what you mean. Yeah, uh, but no, yeah, I, I pretty much agree with that. I think um, I have yeah had put on some great matches in the past for sure, mm-hmm. but yeah, I don't think it's like a massive huge loss like people are making it out to be. It's a shame. No. It would be good. Same goes for Paige as well. Yeah, I mean, it would have been cool if she stayed. I mean, that's a huge loss. But uh, yeah, but you know, at the end of the day, it's what it is. You know, I'm not not crying about it. Yeah. <laughs> No, I mean the, the fact that there's you know places for for people to go and wrestle is great. Yeah, I don't think she especially needs wrestling. Uh, I'm guessing she loves wrestling, and that's why she, you know, is going to go to Japan and potentially go to AEW. Uh, but you know, she's doing acting and stuff now. She's in fucking Star Wars for crying out loud, you know? Yeah, exactly. So um, I don't think she needs wrestling. No. But I don't know. Apparently, people think wrestling needs her. I personally disagree but you know you can't you can't say these things out loud sometimes <laughs> yeah yeah no, i know what you mean how are you feeling about AEW at the minute i like it i don't think it's as must watch as it used to be um mm-hmm. but it is it the shows are consistently good i think at least good maybe not amazing as they used to be but they are fun yeah i i, I, I can see that i mean uh, there's, it's been a weird year for AEW. I think this is it's, it's been AEW's weakest year so far. Yeah, I did, I did this guy came uh, back. But I think I can't remember his name. CCM Sorry? something. It's a guy that came back apparently. Some guy on the CCM. Something. Yeah, I don't know. can't remember. Oh, some flash <laughs> in the pan. <laughs> yeah. I mean, for God's sake, you know. <laughs> that's, what, a, I mean, that's so weird. The, the guy. Should never be touched ever again. If he's not, I mean, you know, he could still end up back in AEW. Yeah. Uh, there's, there's, there's a part of me that thinks he's not done. Yeah. I because think... apparently they've got no, they've, they've got no interest in buying his contract out. That's strange. So, that which says to me that they're either going to let it run and just pay him to do nothing, which I'd be surprised about, mm. or when he's injury free. He's going to come back again. Yeah, maybe, maybe they're just letting the F thing call off for a bit because either way, he can't wrestle right now because of the injury. So maybe they're waiting until his injury is better and then see what everything is. And if it's, you know, he got the call, if it's cool, the heads prevail, then maybe he can come back. Uh, or if he's still bitter mm. and angry about whatever, weapons or whatever he's angry about now, he can, he can, uh, he can bugger off and go somewhere else. But the, that, that, that's the thing. It, was, it all seemed so incredibly unnecessary, didn't it? Yeah. Just like, so. He's called. He's calling other people unprofessional, in the most unprofessional way he could. Like <laughs> just his boss, yeah, boss yeah. is sitting right next to him, and he's <laughs> complaining about, oh, these idiot children I'm working with, uh, blah blah blah. It's like, uh, what are you doing, dude? This isn't the place to do it. <laughs> yeah, just keep your mouth shut. Yeah, yeah, it, it's crazy. I, I really don't understand what it is that he's he's playing at. And now, you know, I, I, I'm a punk fan. I am, um, but. To see him back was awesome. To see the way he acted was disappointing. Yeah, it was. A, yeah, disappointing is the right word because it was such a huge moment him coming back. Um, yeah, it's something we never thought we'd see. And then he did have some good matches, and then yeah, he just went and did that, which is yeah, it was disappointing Inj- a lot of people. Injuries haven't helped. Yeah, but he's not. Helped. He's not working to his ability. He's you know he's older now, so he can't do some of the stuff that he used to do before so stylistically you have to change to to your body's limitations yeah yeah he's still still obviously a fit guy and can still do a lot of a lot of stuff but he's not you know he's not been around for 10 years or whatever it's been yeah you know you you you, you, you're limited your limitations change as you get older so, uh, you know, the injuries are, are unfortunate and it sucks. But if he does come back, he needs to work smarter. Yeah, absolutely. 
You can uh, still put on a good match and also not kill yourself and not fuck your body up to the point of no return. Yeah. It's just, yeah, it's just a strange situation all around. Uh, with, I think with, he knew he was injured and I think he was frustrated about it. Maybe, yeah. But And I think the frustration has perhaps got the better of him and that's why he went so in like he did. And then that, that you know... Because we've all been there. Well, you know, it, it happens. You get frustrated and you, you, your temper just boils. Yeah. So he, yeah. He, maybe he knew that he was injured and totally fucked and that he was going to have to once again vacate the championship. And, you know, that makes him look stupid. <laughs> and he'll think he'll feel stupid for having to do it again. Yeah. So maybe that sort of embarrassment caused the anger or whatever. But either way, whatever he, what he did was unprofessional. And it, it sucks because this is a guy that I was so excited to see back um, and wrestling again and, and enjoying it, seemingly enjoying what he was doing in AEW. And also such a huge get for AEW. Big time. And, you know, I feel like all of that stuff in the media scrum really halted AEW. And, you know, it obviously was on an upwards trajectory, you know, I feel like it started a downward trajectory and now it's starting to sort of go steady again. But um, it, I, th I feel like his behaviour and all that sort of stuff and the brawl backstage, uh, I feel like it really sort of derailed AEW uh, a little bit. But they are, you know, what they did, the best thing that they could have done and what they did do was when CM Punk left, uh, well, you know, after all of that, the Dynamite after, was they got back to basics with the wrestlers that they started that company with. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that teaches AEW a valuable lesson. You don't need all these fucking huge megastars to be a good wrestling company. You don't need to sign all the ex-WWE talent to be a good wrestling company. You can still be a good wrestling company because you've got good wrestlers anyway. Yeah. Did look at MGF right now. He's getting it as a world champion. Exactly. Incredible. You know, you, you could have easily built Darby Allen, Jungle Boy, any of those guys that they considered the pillars, Sammy Guevara, who, you know, yeah, he's a bit of a dickhead, but <laughs> yeah. he's a talented guy, no doubt about it. So you, you can build, you could build the company around what they would call the four pillars. Yeah. Easily. Without signing all the big superstars that WWE, I mean, you know, who have they signed that's, I mean, there are, there are so many names that they've signed that they've done nothing with and are now doing absolutely nothing. Yeah, I know what you mean. Like, yeah. And I don't think putting them in Ring of Honor and trying to start Ring of Honor, again, is the right thing. Yeah, I, I can see Ring, Ring of Honor having, like, being sort of the, not but kind of like the NXT of um, AEW, sort of. Um, I'm sorry, but oh, how do I word it? put some of the lower card people down in Ring of Honor while yeah. to, and have them do something instead of just sitting in the back doing nothing or resting on dark. They can actually be on TV uh, resting mm. for titles. Um, so, yeah. I don't know. I, I like I'm to... very sceptical yeah. about Ring of Honor. Yeah, I want it to be successful. Um, obviously, Claudio I do. Just... I want all wrestling to be successful. Yeah. But... I, I like Claudio uh, just won back know. the title um, in a yeah. cool match which I just watched. Um, and yeah, just it, yeah. Apparently, I haven't seen the whole thing, but it's a good show. I've heard. I've watched the main event because I like Claudio a lot. Um, mm -hmm. So I didn't yeah. like the ending, but it's fine. Yeah, I'm, I'm okay with it. But it's a bit. It's something a bit fine. different. I, I know, I'm okay with it. I just didn't like it. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, yeah. but yeah, I'm, but I'm, I'm, I'm skeptical about a revival of uh, Ring of Honor or ROH like TV weekly TV or however they're going to do it. But yeah. Uh, I look, I'll reserve judgment until it happens. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's one of these things. Can do, it could go either way. So I'm, keep, I'm keeping an open mind. I'm, I'm hoping it succeeds. Mm -hmm. and it's okay. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. And there we go. An hour 44 in the, in, in the, in the, in the books. <laughs> yeah. I think that's it. I think there's anything else I can think of. Um, no, I don't think so. I think we've covered, we've covered all bases and now we can start afresh next week with, usual games and grab stuff we've got game of the year stuff out of the way we've done a little bit of a wrestling catch-up yeah and now we can now we can move forward next week we'll have better sound and better video <laughs> and all that sort of stuff if my laptop wants to play ball 
<laughs> I'll make sure that it does. I'm going to use Kaylee's fancy laptop next week. That's yeah. what I'm going to do. Good idea. Oh, yeah. War Games. Very good. Oh, yeah. War Games was very, very good. Very good. War Games. War Games. I say no, he's, he's back in WWE now, but he's not allowed to be on TV for a year, apparently. So. That's so weird. But, yeah, but he's got a vice president role, so he's got a he's got like a big deal role when he starts back in WWE in January. Yeah, that's good. I'm glad about that. He deserves it. But it makes sense for him to want to. It makes sense for him to want to be back there. Yeah, definitely. It's where he spent most of his wrestling life at the end of the day. And the way he talks about it on his podcast, um, he's obviously got a big, you know, soft spot for WWE. He likes, you know, he likes Triple H. He likes all the guys there. And uh, yeah, he's, he's lads there as well. Yeah, exactly. Yes, yeah. he's great, by the way. He's really great. Tremendous technician. Yeah. Very, very good. So I'm looking forward to seeing more from him going forward. He's going to be a big star, I think. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. So, yeah. For sure. Cool. So, yeah, this has been a, it's been good to be back. And I'm excited um, to keep going forward and recording again next week. Yep, yep. Um, yeah. Going to be good times. But for now, this has been a brand new episode, believe it or not, of the Games and Graphs podcast. We are a wrestling and video game podcast that posts across podcast services everywhere. Everywhere. And youtube.com forward slash games. Graphs, please do check out Added Time, hosted by Steve, who of course used to be on this podcast and is welcome back to this podcast at any time that he so wishes. But he's busy with Added Time in a minute and we understand that. Go follow us on social media at Games and Graphs on Twitter and Facebook and Instagram. Uh, you can find me at Sunny underscore club on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram and the Finn Steel on Twitter. And Twitch. There we go. And Twitch also, of course, follow Finn's Twitch channel. Yes, Twitch.tv forward slash the Finn Steel. Yes. Cool. We got it. There we go. But I'm Sunny G and of course I have been with Finn Steel. And we will see you next week. Take it easy guys. Goodbye. Thanks so much. Goodbye. Doodles. Divas. I I I may come